Hola. I am Timisia Tidamia, fashion designer, and this is my Fiji. Fiji's fashion industry has produced some very recognizable and influential names when it comes to designing. Hapfield Herda, Naina Sayat Kayum, Robert Kennedy, Samson Lee and Andy Koilanganilau are household fashion designer names whose consistent fashion lines have delivered innovative ready-to-wear pieces that can be seen worn by their customers far and wide that will soon be added to the Designer Hall of Fame is Temesia Tuivalmia, an upcoming menswear designer who's ready to wear pieces, define fashion cutting edge, and tonight I introduce you to this rising star. This is the popular blazer that was on the runway. Wow. Red blazer. Bulavinaka, my name is Temisia Tidaumia and my brand is called Temisia.co and I am a men's fashion and lifestyle as Temisia.fj Traveler. I am from Matuku in Lao and I have been a men's influencer for about five years now and my brand Temisia.co for my men's wear and women's wear has it's only been a month, so it's a month old. Obviously. These are genderless, okay. um, but they meant right. to wear, yes, yeah, yeah. So anyone could put it on. Uh, my business is Timisia.co is um, it's still in the beginning stage. I really, I really have so much dreams about where this will go, but it all started with me being a men's influencer for fashion and lifestyle um, as Temisia.fj Traveler. So as an influencer, you know, I thought I need to be influential, so I had suits made for myself. And uh, by then, I still didn't think of a brand as Temisia.co. That just came into picture during COVID while I was at home. Earlier this year, um, towards Wearing Fiji, where I launched my, uh, first, my first ever collection for my brand, Temisia.co, um, that's when the business started. So it's probably been a month now since I've started, um, but during that four to five years where I was making clothing for myself, um, little did I know that my business was in the making. I was building relationships with my seamstress, um, with my suit tailor, and with my casual menswear tailor. And so that's the beginning of the business for Temisia.co. Um, so Samson Lee is a co-founder for Wearing Fiji. And as a gift, he's given to the designers, such as myself at Temisia.co, to stock up here at the Samson Lee Boutique on Butt Street. And also I will be on Instagram, available to all my Instagram uh, friends and followers, um, where I will be selling. But for sure I know the pieces um, will be exported to a few boutiques around the Pacific and the world. Yeah, very soon. What really inspired me to go into menswear as bold as it is right now that I'm wearing um, is because uh, I moved from Fiji a few years ago and um, I realized that men's fashion in Fiji and the Pacific in general wasn't as strong as the women's fashion is and how fast it's moving with the world. And so that was always a value and a mission that I made for myself. If I ever went into menswear, was to make sure that I was bridging the gap between the Pacific culture and the Western world. So as you can see, a lot of my suits have a little touch of the Pacific with the bold prints, but have the Western pattern with, you know, blazers and suits. Uh, but like this one, you can see for sure, this is a pattern that I created for my brand. Yes. Temisia recently debuted his first fashion collection at Wearing Fiji 
a fashion show that was held at Suva's Grand Old Lady, the Grand Pacific Hotel, on September 5th. His brand, Temisia.co's collection, was inspired by lucidity, a way in which he was able to express himself with what he would wear that manifested practicality. I feel like creativity is not something that just begins with you. It starts off from somewhere or from someone. And as it starts from there, you take a piece of it and you create something new. So that's how I see creativity. I think the first ever challenge was money. Because in order to go into men's influencing uh, for lifestyle and fashion, or just being a blogger or an influencer, or going into fashion, you know, you really need to invest before you can tell people, you know, your actions speak louder than words. So I had to invest a lot of money in my suits and they, they're not easy to come by. My tailors charge a lot, but it's understandable because of the pattern and the sewing. And so that was the first challenge I had to go through was to really, if I wanted my brand to grow to where it is today, was to really invest money. The second part was building relationships with these tailors and seamstress. It took me a day to find these tailors, but it took me four years to build a relationship I have with them now, where they're not burning my fabrics because they weren't used to making suits out of these fabrics. Um, so those were the two main challenges I had. The best thing about it is that I get to be um, a Fijian wearing Fijian clothing. That's been my goal, to wear Fiji. And so that's been something best about it. And also just making clothes for myself because I love shopping. And every time I travel, I, I shop. I, you know, you, sh you shop a lot. And so when this whole COVID happened, the best thing that ever happened to me was to make clothing for myself. So every day, I try my best to wear something that I've made. COVID-19 has really put my life in perspectives that I've never really thought about. And I've literally really prioritized things that matter. And I think one thing that really stood out was supporting local businesses. And because I'm all about lifestyle and adventure and food, um, this was the perfect time to advocate for local businesses. And so while I was doing that, I was in the making of building my own business. So it's wearing local. Um, so it, it's really shifted me to prioritize um, local products first um, than our, you know, um, imported um, brands that come in. I definitely, the first one would be my church family. I honestly wouldn't have done it if I didn't have God in the picture. It's been something I've been really praying about coming towards launching this collection. Um, and so having it come to life was definitely a prayer back to God. It has just been my church family and really the fashion industry. Um, here in Suva, we're so, um, we're so blessed that we have designers older than us that, you know, that give us a little tap on the back, encourage us, even help me with getting my, my label embroidered on my clothing. So that has been, I think, the best support ever was having people in the fashion industry in Suva um, really put out their arms and really support me going into this for the first time ever. An advice I would have for, you know, many upcoming designers, um, I've only been in this for, you know, this year, for maybe six months now. Um, but one thing I had to really put in mind is who is Temisia? What, what do I want to, to share with everybody and what resonates with people? And so that was really the first thing I had to do was to create patterns that were unique to me and people knew me, uh, knew the patterns that were, for, that were about me. So by the time it was down the runway, people knew, oh, it's Temisia because of the patterns of the blazers and the shirts and the shorts. And so that's the first thing I would give as an advice. You know, um, I really had to find who Temisia was before I could start making clothing for other people and for it to resonate. I think the best thing about it, uh, being a fashion designer here in Fiji, is because it's such a growing market here in Fiji. It's not as big as what it is like in New York and other countries that where fashion is the fashion capital. And so the great thing about Fiji is that you can wake up the next day and determine yourself to do something like a brand of a clo uh, clothing brand and really push yourself to do it. And so that's been great about it. And because our culture is very communal, um, the designers that have, you know, seen me step up to the challenge to go into fashion designing um, have been very supportive. So I think that's the first thing is that it's such a close-knit family that you're always getting a message of support from another established designer. 
I definitely have a vision board where I do want to see my menswear sold in boutiques around the Pacific and the world. Um, that's been a dream of mine is to be able to cater to men um, in the Pacific. So that's my first goal is to see my clothing, my brand, Temisia.co, in those boutiques. And um, hopefully get my e-commerce market online uh, with my website. My name is Temisia Tridamia and you're watching My Fijian Voices on my TV. I was born in Tavua um, to a German father and a Fijian mother from, from Nakelo and Gamea. Um, I'm an interior designer here based in Suva and our business is pretty much open 24 hours. Mm. Full Fiji, my name is Bronwyn von Rhein and this is my Fiji. Meet Bronwyn Von Ryan, one of Fiji's most sought-after interior designers, creators and project managers, whose brand Von Ryan Design and Interior Design Studio has worked on redesigning the interiors of some of Fiji's most iconic buildings such as Government House, the home of our president. I was born in Tavua um, to a German father and a Fijian mother from, who's from Nakelo and Gamea. Um, I'm an interior designer here based in Suva and our business is pretty much open 24 hours. Mm. Yeah, I've been working in the industry in Australia, in the interior design industry for roughly about 20 years now. Um, when I came to Fiji I had young children so I started a company called Bold Events um, which did events around Suva and I did that part-time because I had younger children. As my children got older and I, was a, I had more free time, I was able to actually start my own interior design company, which, is, which was the intention all along. I would rearrange my parents' house at the, as early as eight years, at the age of eight, and I was doing it everywhere. Every place I went, I was rearranging furniture, I was bringing in flowers, I was bringing in plants or you know, my friends would go away for the day and I'd, I'd be in there, you know, helping them move furniture or do something. Um, to the point where I was even making money throughout high school, um, picking paints. Uh, my school friends' parents were calling me to, what should we do here? Um, for me, it was all about the movement of space and how, how you live in it and how, what the, the things that can be better in that space for you to live better. The way that buildings are built, how, they, how the mechanicals work and how it feels is what gets me excited about building. Yeah. Interior design just wasn't, you know, it wasn't done here. And so when there, there are contracts, usually an interior designer is there from the beginning so that there's an allocation for that work to be put aside. Um, what I did face here was that it was an afterthought for most builders and most architects. And then it ended up running into problems at the end because nobody knew what finishes had to be put on the walls. Nobody knew the floors. Um, so all of those things need to be decided upon um, before it's even signed off. Um, because it all needs to be ordered and sometimes you know and they can that can delay projects that can um, essentially cost the builder money um, the whole job the best part of what I do is um, I get to challenge myself creatively and sometimes I have clients that are just uh, say go for it or um, and then some are a little bit more restrained I like the ones that just say go for it. The clients as well, they, they're great people and because of what I do, I have to get to know them so that I could, you know, design around their lifestyles, around um, the way they live and also the builders, work with builders. So I get to work with some really great people. That's probably the bonus of, 
of the interior design business. COVID-19 impacted the business um, not so much for us but for our clients so if we had projects that were coming up those have been stalled or delayed or cancelled altogether which ultimately affects us um, we only take on because with one you know interior design jobs take usually Six, to six months to two years to finish, from start to finish. So we don't take on a lot of that work. And because COVID had happened later on in the year, we pretty much finished that year's work. So we were okay then, um, but now it's, it's slowly get, coming back. Our new clients, the existing clients, are now wanting to finish their projects. Um, but there was a bit of a lull period, therefore six months. It's actually taught us um, that you know you can have a little bit more balance um, and forced us to have that little bit more balance and it's it's working out for us really well. I hang out with the children more. It's great. It's you know they're full of energy they you know and I feel as though I've got more energy I'm yeah just getting to work or not even having to come in the work is still being done. Um, that's, that's my motivation. I do tend to be on the internet quite a bit just to get that inspiration, but the motivation definitely comes from the people around me and my family and just how exciting some of the jobs can be. Go for it. You have to have a passion for it because, um, you know, despite the common, you know, uh, perception that it is a glamorous um, job, it is not, um, and I have to, and I, I'd have to reiterate that all the time. I'm sitting here looking glamorous, but I don't look like this every day. Usually, I'm dirty. I'm on a job site. I've got boots on. I've, you know, the hands are dirty. And there's a lot of problem solving that you you need to have as a skill set. Um, but definitely study interior design. Get a uh, degree in des interior design get some work experience um, because I think that will, well you have to get work experience in order to sort of go out on your own. Learn uh, building codes, learn it. Um, passion is just not enough. Again, I have to challenge myself there too because we don't have the resources here. Um, I like to order things as much as possible from Fiji but when I'm unable to, it, I have to uh, procure from overseas and that takes a lot of time. That's probably about the worst uh, part of uh, being an interior designer in Fiji. The best part is having to come up with ideas and figure it out and custom make everything. And it's always a one-off piece. And the client is always just, wow, this is amazing. Nobody else is going to have this piece. That's the best part about it. And the people, are, people in Fiji are a lot more relaxed um, and they're open to, open to anything, which is fantastic. They're, yeah, they're, it's very easy going here. And um, yeah, they let your design shine. So I love it. My business in the future I'd like to expand on my staff so that I can pick up more work because I'm pretty much doing it all at the moment on my own. Ooh, that smells amazing. Bula, I'm Victor McGinnity from Dilo Up and this is my Fiji. Bula, I'm Victor McGinnity from Dilo Up, and this is my Fiji. Victor McGinnity is the brains behind Dilo Up handmade products, a Fijian brand that is famed for its soaps, balms, and sunscreens. 
Tamanu and Dilo oil is the base ingredient of his products and tonight, I introduce you to the founder for one of Fiji's boutique personal care range. I was born in Suva, 1984, CWM, and I've lived all my life in Lamy. I did complete all my schooling in International School of Suva. Later in New Zealand, I did a Bachelor of Applied Science in Environmental Studies. So I have a strong passion for, for the uh, marine environment and, um, and the sport of surfing, which is something I've been competing with uh, for many years and representing Fiji. Apart from surfing, um, I was fortunate enough to be to have worked a few years um, overseas on super yachts, so I've had a lot of experience traveling the globe. For like the last five years, um, I've been based in Fiji. There's no place like home and um, I can still do you know yachting jobs from time to time, but I like to do things more locally now and spend most of my time here in Fiji. Dealwap is a home-based business, um, so I do most of my work from home, um, you know, using small batching equipment, um, soap molds, um, double boilers and just your basic kitchen equipment really um, but even though I work and create from home we do not sell our products from here so basically I, I do deliveries around Suva and I can take orders online I can post orders locally and and globally and um, we also are at um, the rock market monthly rock market in Suva and at the Vunda Beach market in the west I always believed in the oil it was something that I that I used um, since I was young, you know, after long hours in the sea surfing and exposure to the sun and the salt, I found it was the only thing that kind of helped me. It, um, you know, moisturized, kept me moisturized afterward and relieved my sunburn. But it wasn't until I met my partner, Hannah Bennett, um, whose, you know, whose family business was dealing with dealer oil and producing dealer oil out of Rotuma. Um, so I started, I began to work with their company, making the oil, and that's when my love for the dealer oil really grew. I learned a great deal in, in, about botanicals, um, dis distillation of plants, and all types of natural oils from um, Hannah's father, John Bennett, who also taught me my first few batches of, of soap. And since then, I've been experimenting on um, you know, make, creating soap and also other things like balms and sunscreen. Some of the challenges I faced when I began, um, just like starting up with any business really, is like just the initial capital to get things, to get things moving. Um, it's, it's a long, slow, hard road really if you don't have any, any capital to, to invest with in the beginning. Um, unfortunately for me that was kind of hard to do. Um, so I've been, whatever little money I've been able to make on the side, I've been putting back into the business. So it's something that I've started from scratch and I'm still scratching away at it. Um, but now that Dilop is starting to gain popularity, um, it's, it's slowly starting to pay off. Tamanu on Dilo oil has been used for centuries to treat many common skin conditions. Research suggests that the Ndilo oil does have some properties that would make it effective for treating wounds and other inflammatory skin conditions, which is the unique ingredient used in all Ndilo Up products. Um, COVID-19 has had both a, a negative and a positive effect on the business. The beginning of April, when the pandemic was sort of, you know, kicking off and the lockdowns was happening, um, our wholesaling business um, in Dilo just completely stopped. So we were pretty much out of work. Um, but then that meant that I could, that I had to solely rely on the products that I was making from the oil. So Dilo up. So spending more time making products and um, and spending more time on marketing and things like that. Um, so in that respect, it's it's been a positive impact because I've actually grown grown it in very short span. Um, just purely because I've had enough time to work on it. So I guess the impacts on my life um, have been, um, I'm, I get, I'm more conscious about you know, personal hygiene and stuff. It's, it's lucky that I'm in the business of making soap, so I can wash my hands regularly and stuff like that. I just keep moving forward with, with whatever I'm trying to do, no matter what's, what's happening. <laughs> I, d I have applied a few months ago to, um, for the Young Entrepreneurship Scheme. If it does work out, then it's gonna be you know, just the boost that DLOAP needs. But other than that, it's just been the, the support from loyal customers and, and family, basically, that um, believe in myself and the business that have kept me going throughout these last few months. The things that motivates me at the moment is just making some, some little positive changes in, in, in my daily life and, and also just simply working with my hands. You know, like if I'm not making soap, if I'm, I'm, I'm tending to my marine aquarium or like, you know, in my new veggie garden or busy making making displays and stuff for my, you know, for my products or whether I'm out surfing in nature. Um, these are all little attributes that, that contribute towards my craft and, and towards, you know, what I, what I end up producing with these hands. <laughs>
The advice I have for other SME enterprises is just to nurture your ideas and no matter how um, big your dreams may be, as long as you put in the work, you'll start to see benefits from that. Things will start happening. You know, there's always going to be hurdles, so there's always be ups and downs. But as long as you're learning from your mistakes and you're moving forward, um, you will eventually experience success. Bula, I'm Victor McGinnity, and you're watching My Fijian Voices on my TV. Thank you for watching our show. I hope you enjoyed meeting fashion designer Temesia Tuivaumia, interior designer Bronwyn Von Ryan, and Bulo Ups Victor McGinnity. Now get in touch with me if you also know of someone with an inspiring story that we can tell on our platform. You can message me via our My TV Facebook page. Don't forget to like our page and share this video. I'm Andy Blake. This is my Fijian Voices. It's some of them.